Welcome TDC viewers, in this video I will be synthesizing picric acid from store brought aspirin. As you might be aware, picric acid is a high secondary explosive in which the velocity of detonation is higher than TNT. To start the experiment, we need to buy some cheap aspirin from the supermarket. I brought a pack of 24 aspirin tablets weighing at 300 milligrams each for 95 cents. Note, this is not pure aspirin as it contains gluten, however I will be showing you how to remove it to obtain pure aspirin. Crush 20 aspirin tablets to a fine powder. Measure out 15 grams of potassium nitrate. A 1 litre beaker. A 400 ml beaker. Which fits directly inside the larger beaker. An alcohol burner or any other heating source. 80 ml of 98% concentrated sulfuric acid solution and a 1 litre bottled solution of methylated spirits. Ok, to purify the aspirin, get the crushed aspirin tablets and add the contents into a beaker. Then add a minimum amount of water in order to form a thick paste. To this, directly add 100ml of methylated spirits and stir for a couple of minutes. Once the stirring is complete, filter the mixture. The filtrate should be a clear solution. Discard the insoluble materials left behind on the filter paper. Remove the filtrate and add the contents into a beaker. Set up the appropriate apparatus for the recrystallization. The recrystallization was performed on a hot water bath. The recrystallization of aspirin from methylated spirits should be performed outside or in a fume hood. Once the methylated spirits was evaporated, the pure aspirin should look like this. With the use of the hot water bath, attach the beaker with the recrystallized aspirin and add 80 ml of concentrated 98% sulfuric acid solution. Stir for 15 minutes. In this step, the aspirin is hydrolyzed by the sulfuric acid to form salicylic acid and acetic acid. After that, the salicylic acid is decarboxylated to form phenol with the evolution of carbon dioxide gas. The sulfonic acid functional group produced from the sulfuric acid reacts with the phenol to form either the ortho or parahydroxybenzene sulfonic acid. Remove the beaker from the hot water bath and slowly add some potassium nitrate with vigorous stirring. The solution will fizz and change to a red colour with some brown nitrogen dioxide gas evolving. A short time later, the solution will change to a black colour. To this, add some more potassium nitrate. Keep repeating the addition of potassium nitrate once the solution turns black. In this step, the nitro electrophile is produced by the addition of potassium nitrate to the sulfuric acid. The nitro electrophile reacts with the ortho or parahydroxybenzene sulfonic acid to form picric acid.
As the potassium nitrate is added, the solution temperature rises considerably. In order to control this temperature rise, place the smaller beaker in a larger beaker containing cold ice water. Resume the addition of the rest of the potassium nitrates. Once all of the potassium nitrate is added, keep stirring. Remove the solution and slowly add 300 ml of cold water. Upon addition of water, brown nitrogen dioxide gas will evolve. The red color of the solution will now have a yellow color. After the addition of the cold water, place the mixture into an ice bath. Within a couple of minutes, yellow crystals of picric acid will appear. Leave it in the ice bath for about 10 minutes. After the crystallization, remove the mixture from the ice bath and filter to obtain picric acid. Note, there is no need to purify the crystals as they are quite pure enough. The yield is about 4 to 4.5 grams. Be aware to store the picric acid in a wet state in a glass amber bottle with a plastic lid. Do not store in a metal container as it could form shock sensitive explosive metal picrates. There we have it TDC viewers, we have successfully synthesized picric acid, a secondary explosive from store-brought aspirin. Okay TDC viewers, time for the fun part. Explosive materials often decompose at a rate below the sonic velocity of the material. This type of reaction is known as deflagration. Attach a small amount of picric acid to a wire or spatula, then hold it over the flame. In a few seconds, the picric acid burns away very quickly, producing sparks. It is important to understand that deflagration of an explosive proceeds at a much slower rate than its detonation. In a close-up, we see the deflagration reaction more clearly. The detonation of a secondary explosive is somewhat difficult to achieve due to their low sensitivity compared to primary explosives, which are usually shock sensitive. I tried detonating the picric acid using a acetone peroxide blasting cap, but it failed to detonate. This was probably due to the picric acid being wet. For successful detonation, the picric acid should be dried for 2 hours at 70 to 95 degrees Celsius. Also, the literature mentions that picric acid will detonate if rapidly heated or on percussion, and is noted that the percussion is much higher than for most primary explosives.